Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Shoes Off Inside with me, Kelly Hu, Tamla Tamita. How is everyone? I'm doing great. Oh. I just uh, uh, finished up our our season for uh, for BMF, and um, yeah, we dragged our butts across the finish line. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. I know. I know. <laughs> because of all like the sex scenes that I all have the, all the going yeah all the going oh. on behind the scenes kind of thing yeah don't yeah. give any yeah. don't give anything don't give any away. secrets away I didn't yeah don't give anything away anybody who watches the show knows that there's nudity I mean yeah. not my nudity I mean everybody's nudity <laughs> 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 oh God. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad you're done with that. And then you'll you're going to be coming back to LA soon, right? Because you've been away for so long. Yes, yeah, I will. To the sunshine and it's finally peeking out here in LA. So yeah, yeah. welcome nice. back. And thank you for bringing the aloha. <laughs> yes. LA. Yes. As always, always, as always, as always. Well, listen, we have a special episode today because yes, um, we do. we're very excited. Ooh. No, seriously, because um, there is a movie <laughs> that is about to come out um, that most people have heard about. And if you haven't, you've been living under a rock and that yeah. is Joyride. And Joy it's a ride. movie about four Asian American women who are just going on a huge adventure just run. Otherwise known, otherwise known as the Joy Fuck Club. The Joy Fuck Club. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, right? But yes. In a way, I mean, that's kind of what it is. It's like a yeah. complete like opposite of Joy Luck Club because these girls right. are out there having fun. It's sex, drug, drugs, rock and roll, but also about it's identity. The, the and younger stuff. generation. Exactly. But the you know what? The trailers the had me peeing my pants when they first started oh dropping the trailers. Yeah. So yeah. there's such excitement about this film and it's already getting rave reviews. And so July we're, 7th, right? July, July 7th, 7th it's coming out. Yes, but yes, we yes, are yes. very okay. lucky with a very special guest. And that is Adele Lim, who is the director and the writer, the producer of this incredible film. So Adele, welcome to the show. Oh Adele! my gosh. Thank you so much for having me honored to be here <laughs> with you with Tamla with Kelly thank you so much it's so amazing to have you Adele because let me just preface this with we I interviewed you three years ago in 2020 yeah. um on the May Lee show and that was in, in person we actually saw each other we were in the same room and at that time two things were happening you had just walked away from being the writer for Crazy Rich Asians the sequel because of a pay yep. disparity, right? Your yes. co-writer, a white male who you mm -hmm. respect and you work with and you know, you have nothing against him. He was getting paid at least twice as much as you were, right? Something like that. Uh, I, a lot more. A than lot more than, than that. It was at least five times more yes. if I remember the numbers correctly. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you had walked yeah. away from that and I thought that was just like the most kick-ass thing to do. And everybody big did. balls, big, big balls. balls. But then at the same time, that's right. We like to bring big dick energy. Into exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank but you, you were also much. telling me at that time that you were asked to direct a film that you were working on writing together with some co-writers and you couldn't divulge too much. But I remember you saying, I'm kind of nervous because this is my first film that I'll be directing. Um, and here we are three years later. Joy Can Ride you is about believe to it? I can't believe it. It's amazing. Time has lost all meaning. It was, and we had a pandemic in the middle of it. I know. Yeah. So yeah, when I, when I spoke to you, I think it, it had been a minute since the whole pay disparity thing. And you were my first interview really after that, because when the story came out, I just didn't want to talk to press about it. You know, uh, Rebecca Sun had done a great job writing about it in the Hollywood reporter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just wanted that to speak for itself. Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I want to be the face of pay equity. We just, <laughs> you know, we're all creatives. We just want to do what we do. Um, and I think my fear at the time was, you know, that this was going to define me as a creative uh, moving forward. Yeah. So I was really excited about that opportunity to to direct um, Joyride. And yes, Tablet, I love it. By the way, this is the first time I'm, I'm speaking to Tablet about this and never got a sense of like what you thought being from the OG Joy Luck Club. The, the idea, I, and just it's because me and I were talking about this just a, a few minutes before. It's like, I, I think just to, to, to cast aside the notion that, you know, us persons in Hollywood hang out with each other all the time. It's like, I think 
you know, I've met, you know, Adele on maybe two or three occasions and they're always at galas. They're always at huge events. And, you know, as, 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 as each individual wants to say and convey congratulations and gratitude, it's like, it really is about 10 seconds. It's like, Oh my God, Adele, congratulations on crazy rich Asians. And then, Oh my God, congratulations, Adele, on having such big balls and leaving that contract with Grace Rich Asians too. And then, oh my God, Adele, congratulations <laughs> on Joyride. It's like, but have, I mean, again, when Meg was just describing about, you know, the, the interview in 2020, about how the fact that you're a woman, an Asian American woman, having written and having, again, big balls to direct the story that came out of your brain. Yeah. And especially at this time that a writer strike is going, it's like, all the stars kind of align for Adele Lim. And, you know, just to hear that, you know, you're calling me an OG and thank you so very much, but it is in alignment with where we are progressing together, not only as women, not only as Asian, as Asian Americans, but in just in terms of fun, great stories that everybody can be entertained by. And yeah. that's the pantheon that all of us should be uh, aspire to and should belong to. And I just want to give you those kinds of, Props because you know yes. I, I asked May. It's like why didn't they keep the title Joy Fuck Club? It's like <laughs> it's, that's a that's a shoe in marketing scheme. It's like no no studio would ever have a problem. Go how are we going to market this? This is an Asian American women's <laughs> film. It's like yeah that's that's known as the Joy Fuck Club. It's like how bad are you going to get it? You know it, it's it's like handing you on a silver platter, but um, uh, uh, based upon the trailer and we, we just haven't can seen you, it yet. It's like, hey, Adele, we know it's just, yeah. can you, t can you tell that uh, Tamlin loves the title joy fuck club? She oh, said it about I, four times you, now. I'm so relieved. I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to jump on and we've never had that conversation. And you're right. When we go to all these like fun galas, it's that like, we're just so excited to be in the same space together. Well, it, it's like such dweeby fangirl energy. <laughs> we're just like, I just want to touch your hair. <laughs> And talk about all of it and talk about how how completely like you've changed all our lives because I you know like the first time just for a second um to talk about joy luck club I am an immigrant I grew up in Malaysia and you know other than flower Michelle drums, Yoland yeah other than a flower drum song we had not seen a big major Hollywood movie with American Asian American faces and so when joy luck club came out you know it was the same thing of like recording on VHS like just playing it again and again until like that tape just wears the fuck <laughs> down. Um, and you know, it, it was just, just so instrumental in, you know, my background in the background, so many people like in Hollywood right now. So, you know, when my friends and I came up with, um, the movie, um, it, it had to be, it had to be for, um, girlfriends and best friends. And it seemed like that. It seemed like we were like the, you know, the errant, um, ne'er-do-well, uh, <laughs> teenage daughters of Joy Luck Club. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was our reverent take on it, but also a, a loving, loving homage. And I hope it came across that way. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I think, Lionsgate marketing kind of was really excited about that title, but you can't put Fox you can't on put it, billboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and again, just to, just to button it on from my side, you know, when I first heard it, it's like, I was a little offended because it's like, Oh my God, are they trying to disparage joy luck club? But then, you know, when we saw the trailers and the, the pool of talent behind you, Adele, yeah. you know, with Stephanie and Ashley and the new one, Sabrina and Sherry Cola is like, yeah, I don't. I don't think they're going to be losing on this gamble. They're going to come in winning, and you know, in in in, in Asian America, Asian circles, it's like you gamble, you roll the dice, and you're going to win with these four. So, I'm just so proud to be associated. And uh, you know, when they say joy luck, they'll say joy ride right after. And 30 years from now, they're going to go Adele Lim, Amy Tan. You know, it, it's 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 going to be a, a glorious kind of journey to follow. So, so congratulations! Oh All right, no, listen, your lips to God's ears. Joy Luck Club was a huge global hit. We are, you know, um, we're this little movie. We're hoping people turn out for it on July seventh. But you never know. Um, so far, the audiences that we've shared the movie with, it's been a fantastic experience. Everybody's yeah. been saying they have to see it again because they couldn't hear it above the the laughter. The laughter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a great feeling. It, it, like, you know, making a movie takes a long time. It's like being pregnant with something for so many years. <laughs> and when it comes out, you're like, my baby is the 
most precious, darling, fantastic thing ever. <laughs> but you don't know. You're going to share with a bunch of people who'll be like, no, your baby ugly. So <laughs> when we showed it at South by, that really was the first time we were showing it to like a, a you know, a wide audience that wasn't a curated uh, test audience. And again, the reception was so fantastic, so wonderful, so warm. People were screaming with laughter. And also, you know, I think my, my favorite point in it too, because it really, it's also a love letter to the community, making sure like it, you know, it speaks to people, even though it's so crazy and R-rated. Um, we never wanted any part of it to feel gratuitous. Like we're being gross, you know, for gross sake. Um, and, but people really were laughing through it. There was a moment in it where, um, you know, our character do, does have a real journey. Our main character played by Ashley Park. And uh, there was a touching moment in there. And there was this like 60, 70 year old, like white gentleman who was full on sobbing, like having a moment Aww. because he saw himself in that young Asian woman on screen. And, you know, as a filmmaker, as you know, as a proud member of the AAPI community, that's what we want. It's not about, you know, of course, we want to make content, you know, make movies and TV shows for our community, to, you know, to show our faces out there and reflect it. But a bigger thing that our our stories are universal. Yes. Um, you know, our stories are American. Our stories are, you know, about, about, you know, living, breathing, like fully fledged characters that anyone can see themselves in. So when, when he started bawling, I was just like, yes, I did not know <laughs> that that was a life goal um, t um, to make um, older white men cry. An in older white, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a pretty good achievement though. Uh, Adele. So, but let, let's, let's talk about how you were able to assemble this cast because they are all so talented. Um, and some new, like Tamlin was saying, some new, some <laughs> a, around a little bit longer, but still such a great variety and a diverse, diverse backgrounds, yeah. but still they came together and they killed it. Oh gosh. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I think so. They are they are unicorn superstars. And, you know, because what I'm speaking with, with um, you all and like we're in family, it's like real talk. Um, you know, let, let's talk about the perceptions of Asian American performers out there in the world. There are these um, perceptions that, oh, Asians aren't funny or women aren't as, you know, aren't as funny that yeah. when your project gets picked up because diversity and representation is just such a go-to buzzword for corporations and studios right now, um, it feels like, oh, you know, they're they're putting forward all um, and supporting all, all these movies. What people are, you know, are seeing behind closed doors or, you know, that isn't as widely publicized is that feeling of, oh, it's just that, um, you know, it, it's the hip thing to do right now. Yeah. But do they mm. even really deserve to be in that space? Are they as entertaining? You know, they can't possibly have the same star firepower mm -hmm. as, you know, comics that are more widely known. Right. And we haven't been given those opportunities. So, you know, you you feel all this pressure going into it. Like, e even though everybody can be out outwardly supportive, you know, at the end of the day that you have to deliver something that yeah. kills. If not, you know, there's still that perception at the end of like, oh, well, we gave, you know, we gave Asian women. We gave a you a shot. And right. Yes, oh, right. you know, look at them try. It's like, you know, um, look, look at them doing it, but not as well. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to be contained by that, but you're still very aware of it. Um, but getting back to the cast. So it's all it's all your cast. As you know, like you can you can have you can conceptualize anything as a writer, as a director. It is meaningless without the you know, the craft and the skill and the star power of your actors and having, um, I mean, I'm speaking, you, you all know the landscape <laughs> because, you know, our community has not been given as many shots at being the hero of the story, being number one on the call sheet. Um, you know, uh, usually a lot of times playing characters that are you know, the, the, the side characters, number three, number four, the best friend, the, the, the sexy creature that, you know, yeah. um, we want to make sure that, um, the cast that we had was just ready for it, even though they may not be household names in America um, prior to this. Like, you know, I, I, it's my fervent hope that they become household names after yeah. this. Yeah. And, and every single one of our, our cast, 
Ashley Park, Sherry Cola, Steph Shu. Um, well, Steph Shu's like Oscar nominated. She doesn't need yeah. you know any more platforming. But we again just cast our movie before uh, everything everywhere even came out. Yep. And Sabrina Wu is a newcomer. All four of them are these tremendously uh, talented actors and um, and comics who've been honing their craft under cover of night. Like yeah. um, you know Ashley Park, um, rising star in Broadway. Uh, you know, but. It hadn't had as many shots in the feature and TV world um, before this. Uh, same with Sherry Cola. I saw Sherry open for Ronnie Chang at a yeah. Netflix special. I was like, who is this? Yeah. And she just yeah, like who is this? walked yeah. on stage and owned it. Just, <laughs> you know, so much confidence coming off her. Um, you know, Steph Shu, I was wa- I watched on Aquafina, Northern Queens, um, this TV show yeah. that was show run by my friend Teresa Shao and saw her in Marvel's Mrs. Maisel and just knew, like, just so much talent, um, so much, just craft, you know. And Sabrina Wu, we snatched from the cradle of, I think they, they had they had just graduated from college not so long ago, had never oh. booked, had never booked um, a TV or film role. Um, you know, like basics of like how you hit your mark, how you, you know, how you just operate. Your a- lighting. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. But they were, um, but they were a comic and, uh, and, you know, was you know, totally confident, but confident, you know, being out there just, you know, just like demanding people's attention. And uh, Sabrina's like my favorite audition story because when they, they had not had a lot of experience auditioning for these roles and all these auditions were on Zoom. So in the beginning, they submitted a tape and and I was like, this, I mean, the tape blew everybody else out of the water. They, I mean, they came as such like a fully fledged creature. Like where, where did they come from? <laughs> and when I met Sabrina in person later, they said, well, did you notice in the beginning of my tape, like it started, like the sun was out and then by the end of the audition, like it was like fully dark. <laughs> like they had done something insane, like eighty-seven takes, or it, oh, oh my, my god. god, because that's the amount of dedication they had of just nailing it, oh, wow. wanting to get it right. Oh wow! But she mm-hmm. hit it. I mean, she got the part, and she's like amazing. So. Yeah, the, yeah. So the, um, they the, the character is like female presenting, but um, but Sabrina is you know the, uh, their pronouns are they them. Uh, and that was that was like an emerging thing that happened, you know, when they started working with throughout the movie. And we were so inspired by them and their journey and their personality that we started using like their um, sure. the Sabrina story for the character, too. Sure. I'm, I'm glad oh, sure. you mentioned that, um, Adele. So because that's important to say. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. No. Take, and again, yeah. by the way, um, uh, opportunity for like uh, learning and growth for all of us. Like I, you yes. know, yeah. I just to be able to talk about it in this space. It's not great for that community, but you know, I there there's an adjustment period where I kept messing up. Yeah. Um, and you know, and it puts a lot of burden on them too of just like ha- me having to constantly like apologize and whatever. But I I want to own it and you know, yeah. that, yes. to just talk about it and yes. <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> fun on, on show, and funny. We have a binary person as well that goes by they, them. And it is, uh, I've had so many conversations about that with them. And, um, and it's hard to, for us to remember, you know, it's hard for us, even those of us who are absolute allies who want to respect that. Um, but, uh, but it's important for them that everyone else in the world does respect that and at least tries. So just the fact that you're, you're trying and that, you know, the more people hear it, the more people will get used to it and, and, and not make so many mistakes. Oh, uh, a hundred, a hundred percent. And just to to say, because in the beginning too, it were, um, we want to be, we want to be good allies. And so want to be able to be open about, you know, what barriers we have, even though we want to be good allies, like how we, you know, I, you know, keep messing up or kept messing up. It's because it's wired into our language. And yes. so it just takes a little bit of an adjustment, but that's yep. all it is. It's a little bit of an adjustment. Yes, and once we normalize it, it just becomes part of our vernacular. Yeah, yeah. right. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a part of our, our, our fallibility, our, our, our weaknesses, our imperfections as human beings. But it's fun and it's funny to keep making mistakes and, and owning them because everybody can see that you're trying. Right. And, you know, just human instinct, human nature is that we have to hear something and practice something seven, ten times for mm-hmm. it to become part of our behavior, part of our our, our natural uh, inclination, 
Uh, that's why we get you only know, seven or ten. Yeah, because robocalls. I feel like it's yeah, like hundred like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, then I'm when with we you, get Kelly. Well, yeah, 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 exactly. So it, again, it's it's just just let let and then we own it. It's like, but you know, this is the this is the idea that we are allies and we're just imp- constantly, consistently improving ourselves. So yeah, it's yes. it's and it's all funny along the way too. Yeah. And you hone it for for successful movies like like joy rides. So well, I, I, I was yeah. going to say that, um, it's so important to talk about these things openly, um, in any conversation, but what you've done Adele with this movie is to bring it to the forefront on a big yeah. screen so that these conversations can be had more openly and more accepted, right? Because like it or not, entertainment and movies and TV make the biggest statement right? They reach the most eyeballs. So that's Mm -hmm. why representation in every way matters on the big screen because it's going to reach so many more eyeballs, right? So obviously we can tell that this movie, it was about that too, was about trying to get that, push the envelope in terms of representation in every way. Yeah, it's an interesting trick that we we all do, which is, you know, we're we're in entertainment. So our, our first and foremost, we're there to entertain and when you lead with a message, sometimes it feels for the audience like, oh, you know, nobody wakes up in the morning saying like, oh, I want to watch a movie about representation yeah. or when they're scrolling through Netflix. It's just like I'm doing I'm watching for diversity and inclusion. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're tuning into something because they're like, this is going to, you know, this is going to be a great time. I'm, you know, um, And so we lead with that. But it doesn't mean any any of the other issues are not as important and forefront in my mind as a as a filmmaker. Yeah. It's yeah. just that the medium is the message. So, you know, you, even with something like it, like gender identity, we didn't like put a big spotlight on it and, and say like, oh, well, this is this character's yeah. journey. Um, we, you know, we, um, the, the character starts, you know, with like, um, she, her pronouns. And by the end of it there, there is a switch, but it's part of that character, you know, the, the subtext of that character's journey, um, without making mm. a thing of it. And also because with Sabrina, the, when we met Sabrina, this, you know, we'd already been in prep in it, uh, even if we wanted to incorporate like a, a bigger, make it a bigger thing, it was kind of like far too late in the process, but we still wanted to to honor that and uh, make it part, you know, it just made it a richer arc for that character, Mm, mm, you know, and, mm, and mm. same, you know, to, to bring it to the, the other characters and the other things we explore in the movie too. It is so much about identity and a sense of belonging, but we don't do it in big capitals of like, this is a, this is a story of the the Asian American experience. Like, (laughs) You've got like four Asian faces at the center of it, like obviously. Yeah. <laughs> right. But kudos, uh, kudos to you for incorporating it even after, you know, yeah. you guys had already written the script and, you know, you had gotten so far because it would have been so easy to just say, oh, well, this is how you auditioned. So this is how we're leaving the character, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and again, it's all, it's all a group effort and, a, you know, a lot of credit to my co-writers and producers, uh, Teresa Shao and Cherry Chiva. Um, I, in the, in the prep process, especially, it, I was running around like a crazy person um, getting ready for all of this. And uh, Cherry and Teresa had spent so much time with Sabrina and the cast. Like they, it's so funny with our cast, like we, you know, you'd spend all day prepping or you'd spend all day shooting, like, you know, 12 hours on set. I can't spend 12 hours with anybody without feeling like, oh my God, I got to like go hole up in a shoebox <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, totally. But, you know, our cast uh, and our writers and, you know, producers, like they would spend all day shooting and then they go back to our, you know, um, our rooms at the hotel. We're all in the same place in Vancouver. It's like adult day camp. And they would just hang out with each other, eat all their meals together, hang out play even games more. together. Yeah. Um, you know, like literally I get texts from them, like, you know, just napping in each other's beds. Um, <laughs> so it, it was because of that closeness that they all had, um, that a, the, the bonds between the, the characters were real because the actors had that bond. Mm, yeah. Uh, and then a lot of their humor, a lot of them, their personality then, you know, actively made its way into the writing and the rewriting on set so that it all kind of, you know, dovetailed and felt of a piece. Well, it probably mm. helped though, Adele, that you were one of the writers, not just yeah. the director and the producer. So you had that background to be able to kind of pivot when you needed to quickly, right? So, so you know, speaking of writing, um, let's get more serious. We mm. we are going through this writer's strike in Hollywood that's been going on for several weeks now, and it's affected the entire industry. 
and you being a writer and part of the guild, I mean, to a lay person outside of Hollywood, even outside of the writing community, what mm. is at the core of what's happening with this strike? What it, what and what's where the major and where have problem? you been picketing so people can join you can in join. force? Because <laughs> yeah. the SAG after strike is pending as well. Yeah, so that's, yes. yeah, it might be happening yes. as well. So yeah, it's, so it's this com- is this you know our contracts are up every two years, um, but I will say this is a movement and a strike like no other because you know the world knows it even if you don't know anything about the intricacies of hollywood and how writers operate um anybody can see that the model of how we um you know watch movies and tv and streaming and all these platforms it's it's changed everything so at its heart of it it's it's fairness it's fairness um for the creators it's and it's fighting for the rights of uh artists uh, whether you are a writer, a director, an actor, that if you create something and put your heart and blood and sweat into it, that, that you deserve to be compensated fairly, A, and in the success of your movie or your film, that you are also aptly compensated in the way it used, you know, it was for traditional movies and TV. If you create a hit show, um, you know, if you create the next Lost, if you create the next Joy Luck Club, if it goes on to make like hundreds of millions of dollars, um, that you as a creative person deserve to have rights, you know, and residuals and royalties off of that. And again, we're not asking for a ton more than what we got. We're asking, you know, what has happened with streaming is that all of that was rolled back, A. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. B, in terms of fairness, um, you know, just honestly, like making a making a living wage doing what we're doing, Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of that, it's not like we're demanding, you know, yacht money. It's asking for, um, you know, demanding for us to be paid, you know, similarly to what we've been doing, because we were already working so hard. Um, you know, writers traditionally, like very successful rate writers, would make, a, you know, a, a good amount of money. But also, um, I don't think what I think what the um, the general public may not, um, you know, fully grasp about the process is how much work it is. Um, you know, I spent most of my career as a one-hour network television writer. And you are easily sinking not just 80 hours of it, like my waking, sleeping weekend um, time is completely consumed by it. I have children that like you you have to like skip birthdays, um, you, you know, like only see your kids for like, you know, a, a little sliver during the day, maybe during the weekends, because it is a job that completely consumes you and doesn't let up. You are giving so much of yourselves. And as writers, as you know, um, as actors, as directors, that you want to put your best creative work out there. This is not just about punching a clock, you know, and mm-hmm. doing the bare minimum of work of like, oh, I've done this, now I go home and I completely clock out. This is our lives. Like we, none of us got into it thinking like, um, you know, this is go- this is going to be a great engineering career that is, you know, that's <laughs> going to guarantee me a pension. We we do this because it's our, uh, it's our heart, it's our lives. And yeah. regardless of how much we get paid, we want to do a good job. And so we're all putting in extra hours. We're all, we're all, you know, killing ourselves to make sure that this is the best it can possibly be. And what has happened with streaming is, you know, we're kind of being crushed that um, the streamers have um, and studios have um, asked for much more work with, with far fewer people. Yeah. So a TV show that used to take like, you know, 12, 14 people to kind of really competently get off the ground while still putting in those like 60, 80 hour weeks. Um, they, they have these mini, mini rooms where the, you know, the studio say, well, instead of having 12 people, we'd like you to have like three or four people just write all the scripts. And then we'll just have one producer on set, produce all of these things because, you know, the writing is done. Mm-hmm. The writing is done. So we don't need the writers anymore. And that could not be further from the truth. Um, mm-hmm. Because right. there are rewrites. But, sorry, right? like, I feel like I'm just like talking a mile away. No, no, I Adele. I mean, because I think this is good this. for the, again, this is good for the average person to yeah. know because yeah. an outsider like me, I don't really know the business either. We just think, mm-hmm. yeah, sure, you write and then you're done and that's it. You know, your job is done. Oh. So, and that yeah. what I realize is, yes, of course, there's going to be rewrites along the way. And you need yes. that, you need that explanation. You need that expertise. So- that's part of it. But also like you're saying, streaming has changed the game where you used to have a full season on network television, which was, I don't know, 
30 episodes or something like that. Um, like 22, 24. 22. Yeah. Now, now down to eight or 10 episodes, right? So mm -hmm. that's a big shift in the amount yeah. of work and things like that, right? Yes. And to be clear, it's not the writer saying like, oh, we used to do more. Now we do less. So just we want you to pay us more. It's not that at all. Yeah. It's like with the smaller orders, um, you know, first of all, the you know, they're, they're asking you to do it with far fewer people. The space between you writing it and them shooting it could be six months, could be a year. And what they used to do is keep um, writers on these contracts where you couldn't go work on anything else. Uh -huh. So you would write these things that you, you'd be forced to write them within a short period of time. Then they wouldn't, um, you know, they, they didn't pay you um, to go produce your episode on set. So then whoever the showrunner is has to produce on set and produce on set. It sounds easy. Like you show up on set. It's not that at all. You are, you know, you have all these um, scripts you've written, but you find out very quickly when you're in production, oh, we can't shoot half this stuff because the dynamics aren't right. You know, our locations are too expensive. It, it's all, you have to do massive, massive rewrites. You have to prep one episode, which is a full-time job while you are shooting an episode, which is another mm -hmm. full-time job and do rewrites on future episodes, which is a third full-time job. So then, and if as a showrunner, by the way, this is particularly unfair to a lot of um, parents, um, you know, and, and largely mothers. So if you're a female showrunner and your show, you know, shoots in uh, Toronto or halfway around the world. Or Atlanta. Or Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And they're saying like, okay, we don't care that you live in LA. We would like you to go to Atlanta or Australia and just uproot your life yes. um, for eight months, for six months to eight months. You know, if you have a family, well, that must suck. Um, to do this job of three people and just have one person do it because wow. they felt like, oh, well, we don't need writers because the writers, the writing is done. Again, the writing mm -hmm. is never done. Right. Television particularly is a writer's medium and mm -hmm. you have to be in on it. And it's so fast moving. You just have to be in it. So right. then again, with the fairness of like the writers who had to write all those episodes and then are kept on contract because they, you know, weren't let go. Um, uh, then you don't have you know, you're just there and unable to jump on anything in a meaningful way because they're kind of keeping you on hold while not paying you or compensating you fairly for that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's these new business models. And again, it's not because anybody's evil and or, or nefarious. Businesses do what businesses do, which is they're looking out for their bottom line. Right, but, right. you know, we're not a bunch of widgets and cogs. Um, there, you know, we are, we are creators. Um, and for us to be able to do what we do well, we need to be able to pay our bills. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and so Adele, that's really what we're fighting for. Here's the other thing though. Um, AI, I know oh, that's, God. that's scaring yeah. the shit out of everyone right now. Right. So AI yeah. with writing, I mean, look, I teach at university level and it's like, I, we're, we're wondering if these students are cheating with AI. So yes. with creativity yeah. and writing for television and film, is that something that has to be addressed too? It's got to mm -hmm. be. You know, I think what we are fighting for now is the future. Right now, as a writer, I'm not, I personally am not that concerned about AI for right this second. I am mm -hmm. concerned about AI down the road. Yeah, right. Uh, right, 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 right. You know, because uh, with the studio, you know, uh, you, you might have exact saying like, eh, you know, for this show, who knows? Maybe we just like plug a couple of things in. Yeah. But AI doesn't just ex exist in a vortex. They didn't just birth this amazing piece of technology right. that comes up with stories. They uh, AI, you have to feed material into it yeah. and mm -hmm. for it to be able to create something. So what you're feeding into it is our work. Mm -hmm, is, you know, mm -hmm, are all mm -hmm. these TV shows and movies that the AI is consuming to be able to come up with something. But right now, even, and by the way, we've, you know, my friends and I were fully like got onto chat GPT and be like, write us a scene from Crazy Rich Asians where they're having dinner at a romantic restaurant and he proposes and, and it will create a scene, but it's not good. <laughs> It, 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 you know, there's no I, heart. I, I get, yeah, it's the exactly. There's no soul. Exactly. There's no yeah. heart. There's no soul. Creativity yeah. is something that's human. I think formulaically, you know, you, you can compile all the data and the algorithms and know what works in terms of market value. You know, it's like this story sells, but in terms of creativity, that's a very human quality. Still a human so, quality. Thank yeah. God for yeah. that. Hey, Adele, yeah. uh, I know we're running out of a little bit of time, but um, but wondering then, you know, for you because you've had this tremendous directorial debut 
Um, are you yes. going to continue directing? What's next for you? Like what's happening? Because I made news with my first show with like talking about, you know, getting you on, you know, to talk about what had happened and where you're going. So what's, what's happening? What's, what's coming up for you? Uh, I love directing and I do just <laughs> love to use your platform to put it out there for whether you're an actor or a writer, I would really encourage you to get into directing. And, uh, and this message is, you know, particularly aimed at women and women of color. Yes. Uh, if you look at, if you look at the Gina Davis, you know, um, yeah, studies Institute, about yeah. how many female directors there are and female directors of color, like in, yeah. e you know, in, in that upper layer, it's not about talk, even, even with indies, but really for like the, the big Hollywood features, our numbers are real depressing. And oh, the, the issue with that is if you try to tell someone else's story and you have somebody who has not, you know, again, you don't have to be Asian to direct an Asian movie. It's just you mm. want somebody who understands what it's like to walk in your shoes, who loves, who has a an understanding and a love of the culture. Yes. And if we yeah. don't get into directing, somebody else is always going to be telling our story. Yes. Right. And, you know, and, and women, you know, again, there's a hundred studies on this. Like women will not put themselves up for jobs if they feel like they are lacking in one little way. You know, right. they, they feel like they, they have to be overqualified where it really doesn't stop our brothers and, you know, a, right. a, you know, a lot of men for saying like, you know what, I'm ready for this. Yeah. And I, I remember having that top of mind when they asked if I would be up for directing, you know, that your first instinct is like, holy shit, like I haven't done this. I, you know, I, I, I don't know my lenses. How, how would I do this? But uh, it's that feeling of no, you know, other people have, have done it. I'm going to jump into it. Um, I had a lot of help and allyship and mentorship along the way, but you figured it out, Adele. Day, you figured mm -hmm. it out. You figured it out. Right. You and, figured out. and, and, you know, women, particularly women of color and particularly moms, like we will figure it the fuck out because that's <laughs> right. what we do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So directing, obviously is something you're going to keep going after and pursuing. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please I, mean, I, I, um, you know, I'm a writer. I'm, I'm a writer too. And through, I think it, the, the reason I love directing is because it's about storytelling and that's yeah. all, all you want to do as a writer. This is just another form, another approach to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you have something in the pipeline? Uh, no, right, right now we're on strike. There's, oh, that's there's right. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. The, but, but yeah, there, there, of course there are things you, um, you think about and adaptations you want to do, but, um, no, there's nothing, there's nothing concrete right now. Well, what about a, a Joyride sequel? I know it's not even out yet. <laughs> I'm getting maybe ahead of the game. By the I way, know, know, full disclosure, know. none of us have been able to even see the film. What? Because all of no, these yeah. screenings oh, were God. packed. Adele. Yeah. I, yeah. Kelly, tell me, you are, that's nonsense. No, like, I know. I, I'm going to, I'm going to get you, you into a screen like right this second. I know. Like, I'll tell you offline. Numbers, like, yeah. I'll tell you offline you, the story, Adele, but yeah, it was, it was kind of not pretty. So it was, <laughs> we, we, we weren't able to get in. So yeah. What? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. You no, are, no, no, no. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We don't um, care because know, we're we're fan girls. No, no, no. Industry. We're total uh, fan I'm, girls anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yes, uh, we we need to see it, of course. But you know, all I'm saying is like the I'm writing this down right now. Okay, by the like way. the Hangover. <laughs> the Hangover had three sequels or, or like three you know iterations. Yeah, three, right? yeah. So I and see Joyride. Yeah, the, as, I, as I think the idea of putting the Joy Luck. Club girls and the Joy Ride girls <laughs> together <laughs> is is a great idea. Just save it for something really super super special, and uh, yeah, just that would be so fun. Just to because again, I think the the the, the time that the Joy Luck Club girls got to meet the Joy Ride girls, we didn't say much much more than say congratulations and. Yeah, it was so nice to meet you. I know, and good it was luck, a blah, gold blah, blah, gala. I saw the pictures and I was like eating my heart out. I was just dying with like FOMO. Yeah. Um, Same yeah. here. Yeah, oh. I know. I yeah. know. That was a that was a glorious moment that night at the Gold Gold House Gala. But uh, but anyway, yes. So, OK, so sequel maybe and other things. But yes, uh, Adele, you're on a tear. And three years yes. ago when I talked to you, I was just like, this woman is a fucking badass. She's going to get shit done. I seriously thought that to my, oh, this woman is going to get shit done. I could just feel the fire in your belly. 
And I think you even said that. You never know how that's going to go. Yeah, you don't. But I just, I I could, I could feel the heat. It was like, you, you knew what you wanted to do and you were going to go after it. And it was, that's why it just makes me so proud that three years later, it's like fucking happening. So congratulations. Seriously. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for having me. Lovely seeing all your wonderful faces on this. Oh my God. I know. I know. All right. We love you, Adele. We're so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. fun have fun when it opens yes thank you (laughs) all right thanks so much ladies okay bye-bye bye bye Bye. oh my god that was great i really hope that she does do a sequel (laughs) i know i'm getting ahead of the game (laughs) but i just feel like why not like isn't that a natural that's a natural thing because when you watch something really really great or fun or you know touching and moving it's like you you want more you can't you can't help it it's like ah yeah, yeah, and yeah. with that cast, it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, why not keep it going? So, um, yeah. but yeah. So excited yeah. for her because she is such an amazing person, she right? Yeah. Besides the talent and all the hard work that she puts in, yeah. she does so much for the community. She's like speaking on panels, you know, yeah. like just championing other people in the community. She. She's been absolutely amazing. So dedicated. Again, especially what she was saying about being an Asian woman, you know, mm-hmm. in that role of director um, in mm-hmm. Hollywood is such a rarity still. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I love the fact that she's being so bold about speaking out about it and trying to push for it and encouraging. I love those final words about encouraging people to get into directing, especially women of color. Um, yeah, so yeah. it's about controlling the controlling. Well, not, not control, but taking care of the narrative. Yes, and usually there are writers who are most adept at it because they know what the story, the world, the the, the universe that they're creating. So they should be in charge. And you know things about lenses and lighting, and you know, yeah, you know, all the that's what you have other people shit. for exactly. And you that's learn that shit. That's just technical shit that they can learn. Yeah. You know, so exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing about being a director is you can surround yourself with great people. Right. There are so many directors who did not know a thing before <laughs> starting and have put out hit movies because yeah. they surrounded themselves with awesome people. Yeah. And then and they take the credit, unlike <laughs> Adele, credit. who says, you know, she's she's mentioning her co- co- her collaborators, yeah. and you know, the, yeah, it's, exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, and why not woman. us? It's because yeah. she's a woman. Women like to share a little bit more, and they're a little bit mm-hmm. more inclusive. You know, it's not you know, but, like some women have big egos, but still, it's not <laughs> dr- ego driven for the most part. But yeah, I, I'm just so glad that she said continue to direct because you know, in terms of a, 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 a counterpart to her is Chloe Dow. Immigrant, mm. Asian yes. woman. Right. And it's like Adele's always been there. And then she's just growing from, you know, the 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 the, the, the circumstances that surrounded her from crazy rich Asians. But then she took it and, you know, took that fire, took that heat and just put it out there into something else, which is what we're witnessing right now. But in remember, so it's I, like she gambled on herself. Exactly. She did. You know, you guys and by remember. turning down that sequel and gambling on herself putting out her own project. This is her reward. But remember, because she well, knows her worth. Before, yes. before, yeah. long before Crazy Rich Asians, decades ago, she started writing in Hollywood with no experience and she was that, given a shot writing for like Xena, Princess Warrior. I mean, Princess stuff Warrior, like- That's right. Yes. So she, she, she paid her dues. She paid her, yes. she didn't come out of nowhere. You know, and like she's saying, a lot of people think that people just come out of nowhere, but you guys have been putting in the work for years under the radar. Absolutely. You know, before Absolutely. you get the break and before you. Isn't you that know. so funny? Yeah. I remember when I did Scorpion King, there was something uh, in, I think it was People magazine, maybe, that was uh, calling me an ingenue. And I was like 30 something at that <laughs> You're point. You're like, what? And I was Girl, like, that may have been the first time you, you still look like an ingenue me, now. But I you have been plugging away. No, yeah. you, but in terms of, yeah. Again, ingenue is like, oh, it's a young, new thing. And it's like, there is that kind of sense of, you know, being discovered, you know, continually being rediscovered. It's like, it's kind of feels good. But again, knowing that the body of work that you've put in, that's, you you get the best of both worlds. You get to be called ingenue, but knowing that you're a, you know, a sage person who has the wisdom 
an experience behind her. So exactly. you, you got it. You got it all. Exactly. All, exactly. So, yeah. okay. So our sponsor Lemieux, we always like to do a yeah. segment at the end of the episode. And today I thought, you know, again, Lemieux is a skincare line. Of course, we all know this, and this is why my skin looks so good. Um, <laughs> speaking of modesty, no, um, but <laughs> Here's the thing. So today I was thought, okay, you know, Joyride, it's all about girls trips and having fun and, you know, kind of discovering yourselves and whatever. Let's talk about, have you been on a really awesome girls trip that was just like over the top or, you know, not even over the top, just what does a girls trip mean to you? Or like, can you share a story about a girls trip? So I, um, I have two really good girlfriends from Hawaii that I grew up with one that I've known since I was kindergarten and, and the other since seventh grade. But oh. the three of us were like, you know, the three musketeers where we were like such great friends, even after graduation. And, um, what we do is every five years we do a girl's trip. Oh, and cool. so, you know, um, I think we celebrate, you know, on the, you know, the, the, the zeros and the fives. And, um, and so this one trip that we did was a road trip. The first one that we did was a road trip from Los Angeles to, uh, San Francisco. And, and it wasn't even about the destination. It was about us getting together, yeah. getting in a car, putting on that 80s music, dancing and singing, <laughs> going up PCH and just going from like place to place, sitting in our hot tub, all three of us together, drinking our, you know, champagnes and just enjoying each other's company. Exactly. And it didn't even matter where we were right. or what we were doing. Right. It, we, we just were having such a blast in See? the moment. And that's in the what moment. matters. It's yeah. the bonding. It's the bonding experience. Like you said, yes. it doesn't matter where you are. You could be like in a tent in your backyard, you know, but yes. it's the bonding yes. of this, that sisterhood. It's it, it, So the, the idea, when you say in the moment, that is something that I think uh, as women, as young girls, we're always attuned to appreciate always called out to say, oh, this is great. I, I think for men, for young boys, I think when we see the, when I see the little Instagrams or the TikToks of little, little boys, you know, you know, from across the sidewalk, you know, they run towards each other with pure unadulterated oh, joy. Yeah. I love those. That, that disappears <laughs> when does. young boys become young men. And it absolutely disappears when they become men. I can't, I think that's the joy about becoming women. It's like, even though I'm this age, it's like, I'll see Kelly who across the street, oh my God, and it's like, <laughs> as if we're, you know, four or five years yeah. old. But for men, it is something that's taken away from them. So it's less like just something, a, a, a curiosity for me as to why. But to be fair, Tam, I think there are some guys uh, who do those boys trips, you know, the guys trips. Oh. Right. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's but a different vibe. I, I don't think it's as like, you know, fun and frivolous and, you know, obviously because, you know, girls are different from guys, uh, but they do have those different kind of bonding experiences. Not as, I don't think as much as women though, like you're saying. But, but it, it's more of like a, it, it's more like a, a winning feeling or a getting feeling or a triumph or feeling or it's like, yeah, I won at the poker table or I won at the golf tournament. golf tournament. You know, so <laughs> it's more of the, you know, who, who I'm that's the best girl. You know, I see what you're saying. Like, you know, I think mm. that's why movies like The Hangover, talking about, you know, Adele Lim's Joyride, it's like, that's why it was just so, because it was those stupid bonding <laughs> moments between those characters. It's like, oh my God, you know, yeah. it, they were, they were open enough, you know, unafraid to just show the, the doofusness of what it means to be. <laughs> bros. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So anyway, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Tam, do you have a girl's trip story to share? You know what? I, I have a really good girlfriend from uh, elementary school. Uh, we knew each other since the fourth grade and she's the organizer mom. I'm not a mom. And the other four women, one of them who has since passed away, but we still get together once every two years, if not, you know, three or four times a year, just for a dinner. And those girls' trips, especially from a long time ago, you know, old school time like Kelly, it, it, it's you just get to be those kids back and forth. I get to be that fourth grade girl at, you know, Andesol yeah. Elementary School again and, and talking about the boys that we liked or, this, you know, the, <laughs> the kind of clothes that we were and whether or not we're still good at the soccer tournament. You know, the, it's a particular <laughs> game. I think it's called dodgeball in some places. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's. 
Yeah. And it's about growing older and it's yeah. about what kind of makeup, you know, what kind of skincare, what kind of clothes you're wearing. It's like, oh, you got to do that with your hair. It, it, it's that, you know, kind of. So uh, in terms of raucousness, uh, they're, they're mostly with guys. <laughs> <laughs> the girls, okay. the girls that I hang out with, I, I think I, again, with girls secrets too, we try to keep it on the DL Yeah, and it's like, nah, I, I'll, I'll keep my, I'll keep my girlfriend's relationships intact. So all I right, want fair enough. But, yeah. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, all, so that's another girl code. That's I mean, that girl code, all of this I can relate to, of course, for girls trips, because it is about the mm -hmm. bonding. It's about the sharing and, and, and all the time that's passed and all that. So I'll share a, a sort of a lighter story. So there was a girl's trip I went on many years ago to uh, Cancun with some friends. And um, then we went to the island of Cozumel and we thought, oh, let's rent some mopeds, right? Because that's what you do. You scooter around the island. And so we we're riding along these mopeds. I don't know what the fuck we were thinking. We see this rickety sign on the side of the road. It's like hand painted, like rickety sign going ruins with an arrow, right? <laughs> and we're like, Oh, let's go look at the ruins. Okay. It wasn't like an official sign. Literally it was hand painted. Like it was from a horror story. So we zipped down this dirt path and it's starting to get rougher. And we're like, where are the ruins? Where are the ruins? And we get to the stop. We see this like hut, like that's falling down. And these people are standing inside. One woman has a cleaver and she's pounding the cleaver on like a chopping block and just staring at us. <laughs> There's a monkey on a chain, okay? He's on a chain uh, with, uh, with the chain is around his neck, tied to like a post. There's another oh. guy like peeling something, but he's like literally looking over at us. And then there are a few other people and we're like, ruins? Ruins? <laughs> I mean, we weren't smoking weed, we were <laughs> drunk, we were completely sober. And we, I, we literally still talk about this saying, we could have been chopped up in a million pieces. In a what million pieces. Wait, what did you ever find the ruins? No, there were no ruins. <laughs> did you just turn around and go back? Okay, oh yeah. yeah. After oh, that, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. we were like, we got to get the fuck out of here. I mean, yeah. it, I don't, but uh, seriously, to this day, we think, what the hell were we thinking? Because we could have died. <laughs> we could have literally been dead. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, you do, I mean, it's not like we were young and stupid. We were like in our twenties, you know, on this trip. So, you know, it wasn't. Oh, that's young, stupid age. Of course. Kind of, of but course. seriously, you're, would you follow a, a hand painted sign that said ruins? Absolutely. With the fucking Absolutely. <laughs> Cause that is who I am. Yeah, I would not adventure. expect that okay. from you, man. I don't feel so bad but then. Yeah. I don't feel so yeah. stupid. Don't feel, yeah, yeah, don't feel stupid. Of okay. course, of course. Okay, but yeah. just think about yeah. the image of these people in this rickety hut with a cleaver and a monkey on a chain. I mean, that's right. that's what we ran into. Yeah, exactly. So that was one of my girls' trips adventures that could have gone really badly, but thank thankfully I'm here to tell the tale. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, look, this is why we talk about these things uh, with, you know, with this Lemieux um, segment, because we just want to talk about like, fun and wellness and all the various ways we kind of try to keep our lives balanced and healthy. And, you know, from all of us, clearly it's about our great girlfriends and the fun that we can have. And that's what yeah. Joyride mm -hmm. is all about too. So yeah. Um, yeah. thank you to yeah. Adele Lim for coming on the thank show. Thank you, Adele Lim. Yes. Uh, love her. And I know she's great. She really is great. She, what a badass. Um, and thank you for to my ladies, Kelly and Tamlin, once thank again. Thank you, May. And thank you, May. Until next time, everyone, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, review and rate us on your podcast platforms. So until next time, everyone, take very good care. Bye. Thank you. Welcome back to LA, Kelly. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Soon, soon, soon.